Good morning. Good morning. It is a really rainy day here. Really rainy day. I woke up to thunder and to lightning. I love my satin sheets. No. I have satin sheets and are my favorite sheets. They're just this like dark blue satin sheets and they feel so good on my flesh. And then I bought this furry, furry, plushed out, total girly comforter set. So my, my pillows and the, the whole comforter and it. it's just this fake, fake fur, you know, that, and it's just so, it's so cozy, but it's, you slide all over the place in my bed. Like you can't help it. The sheets slide you one way and the blanket slides you another way. And it's just kind of crazy, but it was nice to wake up in that kind of bed, soft, cozy, furry, satin, and to the thunder and the lightning. And it was just this beautiful, beautiful this morning. And I just laid there for a second and I didn't want to get up. And of course, then I'm out and about and I'm dropping kids off at school and I'm running to and fro. And I've been thinking about all the stuff that has happened in the last like 36 hours. It has just been this roller coaster of emotion and drama. I've had a lot of drama occur over the last 36 hours. And I was thinking about it yesterday. I was going to a structural integration appointment, which I go to, you know, like once every four to six weeks, I go to a structural integration appointment to get my leg and just body work done, but to really get my, my leg worked done so that I don't have to have surgery and all that good stuff for my injury. Found out that I had another injury that I didn't even know about. So that was, I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. What is my body telling me right now? What is going on here? You know, where do I need to put the armor down? Where do I, where, where's, why am I resisting so much? And all of my resistance was around surrender and intimacy and vulnerability, everything of the heart, everything of relationship and looking at all the different, all the different, you know, drama things kind of going on. Very little of it is mine, which is, you know, always kind of fun. And it's like when you are, when you have so many beautiful souls around you, you tend to be the, the center, the hub and everything kind of comes through. And that's how it is for me. You know, I'm like, I'm the mom hub and all this stuff kind of comes through my house, whether it is of my children or somebody else's children, friends, clients, you know, lovers, all this different stuff. And it's all coming through. And there's just like all of these really traumatic and dramatic effects to life right now. And I'm just like, wow, here we go. Here's 2020, you know, here's 2020. Let's get this, let's get this baby rocking big time, I guess. Like just so much clearing energy. And I thought about it. I was like, I have so many topics that I can talk about. You know, I could talk about abandonment. I could talk about sex. I could talk about intimacy. I could talk about vulnerability and surrender. I could talk about connection, talk about all this stuff. But at the end of the day, the topic that doesn't ever get talked about but impacts every area of our life is fantasy. And that sounds really sexy and fun, doesn't it? Ooh, Kendall's going to talk about fantasy today. The key ingredient to getting exactly what we want in any area of our life, fantasy, fantasy. So typically when I say, what do you fantasize about? It's kind of like when I ask somebody, you know, I, I frequently ask somebody what turns you on. And people will always go to the sexual aspect of that question and they'll give me, you know, like, this is what turns me on. This is the kind of person that turns me on. This is the characteristics that turns me on. Here's my turn on around this. These are, these are the things that turn me on, in, you know, sexually in the bedroom that I, that I need from an experience or from a partner. But that's not what turn on is. Turn on is a turned on life. You know, when I talk about living your fuck yes life, it's not just the bedroom. We're not in the bedroom all the time. The bedroom doesn't make up our entire life. The bedroom is an intricate, beautiful, powerful piece to the rest of our life. It is definitely needed. A lot of people, a lot of belief structures, a lot of teachings tend to ignore the bedroom aspect, the sex aspect of our lives and the potency and power that we need, that we get from it. And when we tend to push that over to the side, you know, and cover it up, then we're not living our full expression. 
we're not living our full power. We're not really feeling ourselves. We're not embodying ourselves fully. But the bedroom is not, is not, all caps, highlighted, neon sign here. The bedroom is not what makes life. Not 100%. Right? It's the fun. Fun, fun piece for us adults. Definitely empowering. Feels good. It's connective. And touches on intimacy and vulnerability and surrender, empowerment, you know, creative energy. But what, what makes the bedroom, what makes the rest of our life? Well, it's the word fantasy, fantasy. So when I say to you, what do you fantasize about? And this is the question of the day that I'm going to actually be popping off to a few people. So if those people catch this, you probably know who you are. And yes, here is your difficult coaching question of the day. What do you fantasize about? Tell me your fantasy. And I don't want to hear the bedroom version. Not that one. I'm not talking about your bedroom fantasy. I'm talking about what is your big fantasy? What is your big dream? What is that? What is that desire for your life picture? What is the fantasy of your life picture? What is that big goal that you have just burning inside of you right now? Maybe it is on a sexual nature. Maybe it has something to do around relationship or something, but that's not ideally what we're looking for here. We're going deeper. We're going ex more expanding out from this. We need to really expand. You are limitless. And in that limitlessness, the creation of our limitlessness. That's nobody, nothing else on the planet, you know, to our knowledge, no other species, no other mammal or other actually has the creative energy that we have. They're happy in their environments, right? Dogs are happy in their environments. Cats are happy in their environments. Flies are happy in their environments. Snakes are happy in their environments. The the animal kingdom is happy in the animal kingdom. But what do we human beings do? Are we happy in our animal kingdom? No, we're not. We're not happy. We are so not happy. This is reality check. Nobody's happy. Okay? And that's the way it's supposed to be. So why are we not happy? Because we are creative. And if you think that you're not creative, you're wrong. You're creative. You create your world. You create your life. As a child of God, you are a creator of this life that you are living, of the world that you are living in, you are a creator. So what do you want to create? Creation comes from fantasy. Creation comes from having a desire that is bigger than yourself. Now, having a desire, a goal that, that you're willing to trade the hours and moments of your life for. Did you get that? Having a goal that you're willing to trade the hours and moments of your life for. A lot of people trade their life for paying their bills. A lot of people trade their life for, you know, having a comfortable home and a comfortable car, you know, money in the bank, some travel. And that's all great. I mean, we're going to trade our lives for something. But I want you to ask yourself today, what is my burning desire? What is my burning desire? desire that I can fantasize around, that I am willing to trade my life moments for? It might be a really tough one, but that's the question. So if you are one of my coaching clients and you're catching this early, know that this is your question of the day. I expect a text or email report from you. If you're not, share, share in the comment section, share in the comment section, write that question down. Ask yourself that. Really, really, truly tap in and ask yourself that. This question was recently posed to me, and I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna be writing on it all week long. I'm gonna just kind of take a few days to really sit and ponder this because it was so impactful, just so oh wow. Like this is really what my 2020 is about. And I don't know about you. 2020 is for me a year of a year of having 2020 vision, a year of seeing things differently, of expansion, of growth, of having a bigger view on my life and on my dreams, on my goals, on my desires. And I know from, from current and past that the way to achieve anything that we want in life 
is to fantasize about it, to really fantasize about it. Because what do we do when we fantasize? When we fantasize about anything, now typically a lot of people will go, oh, well, I've, I've, you know, I fantasize about having a threesome. I fantasize about my partner doing this. I fantasize about this person that I know is unattainable, the movie star, the whatever, right? The, the, all this kind of stuff. So we have these fantasies. You also probably fantasize about maybe a trip that you would love to take. Maybe, and maybe you just go, oh no, I just sit around and I'm, I'm daydreaming. All right. Well, that's another word for it. Daydreaming, fantasy, these things that we do where we just get lost in the visualization creation of this dream, this desire. Okay. That is what a fantasy is. And where we start to emotionalize that dream or desire. Okay. So we start to tap into the emotion of it. And when we tap into the emotion of it, it's like we're planting a seed in the universe, okay? And when we plant a seed in the universe, much like a farmer planting a seed here on earth, what happens? What happens? Well, the earth goes to work to start to create this thing that we have planted. The universe, when we plant this seed instantaneously, when we have this emotional connection, when we have this burning desire, when we are willing to spend our life moments trade our life moments for this, then what we're doing is we are actually attaching to it. And that is the water. That is, that is the earth. That is the food. And the more we hold this in our mental picture, okay? So we hold it here and we really think about it. We really emotionalize it. We are watering it consistently, okay? And as we water this consistently with our focus, with our emotion toward it, it bursts itself. The question, and here's the really, really important piece of this, is how are you how are you feeding and watering the seed that you have planted? Because the reality is we all fantasize. Much like we are all creators, we all have dreams, we all have goals, we all fantasize, okay? So as we're fantasizing and we are watering and feeding the seed that we have planted out in the universe, then you have to ask yourself, well, how am I feeding it? You know, like what kind of food am I putting toward it? A lot of people go, yeah, fantasy is bullshit. Nothing ever occurs for me. Nothing ever manifests for me. That stuff doesn't really work. I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I've emotionalized it. I've, you know, I felt into it and it just has not materialized for me. It hasn't actually the direct opposite keeps materializing for me. That's the big, my big challenge is that the big, the opposite keeps materializing for me. So how do I get that to change? That's, you know, like that's the, that's the thing there. How do you think you get it to change? It's in the food that you're feeding it, right? It's in the food that you're feeding it. If we're sitting around and we're fantasizing, we have the choice to either fantasize about it actually being in existence, so feeling it as though it already is, or we have the choice to fantasize about it not being and feeling the loss of it, okay? When we fantasize, which most most people fantasize around not having it, they go, oh, if I could only have this, then I would be happy. If that word, if causes great separation between us and our desire, us and our dream, the thing that we are wanting to create. If I, or when that, or I hope that that could occur. I hope that I could make that happen. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it a try. No. Try is doubt. Hope applies that it is not already. We have to understand that our dreams, our desires, the things that we want for are, in order to get them, must feel as though they already are. We, that's what fantasy is about. Think of it in the sexual context. When you are fantasizing about a sexual experience and you are painting this picture in your head and you are starting to feel it in your body, are you actually feeling it? Like you can, can you actually tap in and feel this other person touching you in some way or feel the experience, maybe the energy in the room, the connection of, of other human bodies, the connection, the viewing or whatever it might be that you're fantasizing about. No, you're really in that moment, right? You're fantasizing about being in that moment as if it already is. That's why people watch porn. They watch porn and they masturbate because they're fantasizing about engaging in this action as though it already is. They're fantasizing through live imagery, okay? Through this recorded live imagery, they are now fantasizing and so that they are feeling it in their own body. So they're tapping into that level, 
Well, guess what? That is the exact same requirement that it takes in order to manifest something into your life. Okay. The trick is, is that now, number one, you're probably not running around with this fantasy of this like porn because you're not watching porn all damn day long, right? At least I hope you're not. It's not healthy. It actually disconnects neurons with the whole, in your, in your mind and everything, all the transmitters to this little screen of ours. Messes us up. Completely different than actually the creation work of the mind when we are fantasizing and we were actually creating the images in our mind and the sensations in our body and putting them out there into the, into the universe. But what we can do when much like this imagery is that when we start to paint this picture in our head, we start to feel into it. And then we hold that focus of it being as is right now. It is in this moment. The sensation is in the moment. I can feel fulfilled by accomplishing this right now instead of the, oh, I'll be happy. I'll be fulfilled when this happens and cause separation. Okay, when we pull it into ourselves and we start to fantasize about being right here inside ourselves, then guess what? Now we have that energy. That is the proper water and food to what we are planting, to what we are trying to grow, what we are trying to create. And when we water and and feed the seed that we have planted with our fantasy, with that desire into the universe, when we water and feed it properly, it has no choice but to materialize. If your dreams, your goals are not materializing, then you are not applying the right food and water to it. You are actually living in the scarcity of it. You are thinking and feeling in the scarcity of it instead of the actual existence of it. Okay? Fantasy. Fantasy, fantasy, fantasy. There's a book I read many years ago, and I read it every few years, and it's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. You know, it's considered one of the best books for anybody who wants to, who goal setters, success, um, self-growth books. It is absolutely phenomenal. I believe it was written back in 1936. Can you believe that? It's like, what, 80, 85 years old or something like that, 86, 84, whatever. Um, and... Napoleon Hill, he studied all the greats of, of our time. And he looked at, you know, like, like Ford and, you know, um, Einstein and, and just Edison and everybody who has touched our world in different ways. The creators, the visionaries, the leaders, the game changers of our existence. And our whole existence changes so much. But what these visionaries, we'll just call them, over the course of time had in common he put into this book. Okay. So it's all these success habits. I do encourage you that if no matter what you are wanting to develop in your life, to create in your life, to get read and really digest Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, because it is a very, very powerful, powerful book. But in this book, the, some of the key factors that he talks about is number one. I mean, one of the key ones is fantasy. This concept of of what is outside of us and to pull it into us, to bring it into our present moment. Everything happens right here in the present moment. It's never happening anywhere else. It's always happening right here, which is why when we fantasize, we emotionalize as though it already is in this moment. And then it's really about what we're emotionalizing that we start to birth, that we start to create from this emotionalization. And he pointed that out, you know, like every single great visionary leader out there, number one, had this burning desire, this vision that was so much bigger than them, so much bigger than them. It was so phenomenally humongous that everybody thought that they were crazy. I mean, who would have ever thought if you roll back a few hundred years, oh, that these big monstrous things in the sky called planes, right? That carry two, three, four hundred people can take you thousands of miles within 
hours and they're going to, this humongous body is going to lift up off the ground, go against all universal laws and fly through the air and safely land someplace else. Or what about I can text somebody today. I can message them. I can take a picture and I can send this picture and I can send it across the world. And then the time that it takes, I mean, I, it's almost immediate. I push a button and it is someplace else almost immediately, almost immediately across the world. And they're now seeing the picture. They're now seeing the words. This is stuff that at one point somebody thought, that's crazy talk. You're crazy. That's impossible. That's like sorcery. That's like witchcraft. That's, that's something weird. Like you're mental. But the people that created this had that vision. They had that, that dream and they could feel it. And they knew that it was possible because they knew that all they had to do was really stay focused on this. I ask you today to look at like, really, what is that goal? What is that dream? What is that desire of yours? And realize that you are limitless. You are so freaking limitless. The only thing that is keeping you in the mindset that you are in is by focusing on your current reality. And your current reality was created by your mindset of yesterday and the day before and the day before. All the time past is what is creating your current mindset, your current create your current way of living. Okay? So if you're not happy with your house, you're not happy with your job, you're not happy with your partner, you're not happy with your car, your finances, your sex, your body, your anything, it is not a current moment thing. Your current moment is materializing with the thoughts and feelings that you were thinking right now. Okay. And that is moving into the future. But this current moment, this current moment that you think you're experiencing, guess what? That, that came from yesterday and yesterday is no more. So you've got to get your thoughts and feelings up to speed. You've got to get your thoughts and feelings up to the things that you're wanting, not the things that you have been fearful of creating that you now have in your scope. Or maybe you have a lot of things that you really love, but you're not happy with them 100%. You want more. You want an expanded variety of it. You want something different. You were like, well, that was fun, but now I want this. Well, you're human. You're going to always want, okay? This is just part of the human process. This is called creative energy. Creative energy equals a wanting, a desire to always want for something more, okay? You're not going to feel satisfied for more than that long, okay? That's just the way we are. We were designed like that because we are game changers. We are visionaries. We are creators of this world that we have around us. And in order for us to keep creating and keep moving for our lives, for our own individual families and lives, or for a grander scope of things, it requires us to really tap into this thing called our desire, a goal, the things that we want for. And then to fantasize around them. And when we start to fantasize, to really make sure that we're fantasizing about the right things, feeding it the right, the good food, the good food, the good water, nurturing it well so that we can actually grow the fruit that we want instead of the fruit that we are fearful of. Okay, so my kids are calling me and texting me and I see all these messages coming in. So I'm going to just say... I think I feel like I'm out of clothes anyway. I feel like it's out of clothes. I do want you to look in the comment section for the journal prompt that I gave you, okay? What is my burning desire fantasy that I am willing to trade my life for? What is that? I want you to really look and see how am I feeding my fantasy, my desires? Am I focusing in on on feeding the good food or the bad food? Am I am I fantasizing a nightmare or am I fantasizing my dream, my my true desire? Because those are key components, right? To get the food that you want, make sure that you are putting in the energy, the emotion that you want also. Because if you're putting out a fearful energy, a not having energy, that's exactly what you're going to get. If you're putting out the, this is already here. I'm in love with this. I'm so excited about it. This is just so amazing. Oh my God, I feel so good about this. This feels so good in my body to think about. And this is how you know if you're feeding good food or bad food. When you think about your dream, your goal, your desire... Okay. Do you feel really good, pumped about it, excited about it? Like, yes, yes, yes. 
Or do you go, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I could ever do that. I don't know if I could ever have that. Yeah, but does that stuff rise up? Because that right there, the feeling that you get in your body, if it is positive or if it is negative, is going to let you know what you are actually thinking about this dream, this goal, this, this desire of yours. Okay, because when we are not on point, when we are not in soul alignment, we will have negative emotion. When we are thinking negative things, when we are trying to control something, when we are trying to manipulate something, when we are try, when we are full of doubt, full of fear, full of anger, full of jealousy, full of all this kind of stuff, it's going to cause a negative emotion inside our body because we are not in our soul alignment. And when we are feeling really, really in point, on point with something, when we are really tapped into love around it, we are being unconditional around it, we are not holding expectations, we are just really living it, breathing it, enjoying it, then we will feel a positive emotion around it, okay? And that is that soul alignment. So you always want to lean towards what feels good. If you have any questions about what am I manifesting right now, are you feeling good about it or are you feeling negative about it? Like, here you go. This is what you're actually thinking. You can be telling yourself all damn day long, oh no, I'm thinking this, I'm thinking this, I feel this, I feel this. But if your body actually goes, no, actually I'm really like feeling bleh about it, well then you're not actually thinking what you think that you're thinking, okay? That underlying current. Tap into your emotions. Tap into your emotions. Ask yourself the questions. Get that burning desire. Check in with what your fantasies are. Take the time to set aside and give yourself positive fantasy time around your dreams, your goals, the life that you want to have, the relationships that you want to have, the finances, the body, the health, everything that you want to have. Fantasize about that. Fantasize about that. Make that a priority, a priority focus in your life and enjoy that fuck yes life that you will create from it. This is where the magic is. This is where the miracles happen. It is right here and right here. And that is how we put that all into action. Okay, guys. Um, local people, Addison Bell and I are doing our fourth or fifth year of the Tantra Reboot VIP Day, which is coming up this Saturday. We still have a few seats available. This is open to singles, couples, men, women. This is a level one Tantra workshop. Okay. This is our reboot. This is where we teach you the basics. This is where we teach you those beautiful core practices. If you are trying to develop yourself, if you're trying to embody yourself, you're trying to clear different stuff from you, come to this workshop. If you're a local in the Dallas Fort Worth area, make sure that you get your ass to the Tantra reboot. Okay. This is one of the most powerful classes of the year that Addison and I co-teach together as a powerful small group um, workshop. And I cannot tell you the impact that it will have on your life, the skills that you will learn and how deep and transformative this work is actually that we are, that we are offering in this workshop. So make sure that you go and grab that workshop today. If you're local to the Dallas Fort Worth area, also local people coming up at the end of the month, I have Max, the ancient crystal skull. This is my ninth, 10th year hosting Max, the ancient crystal skull. You can look at that on my events tab on my website at www.kendallwilliams.com. We have a beautiful Saturday night uh, five-hour workshop that we will be working through, and it is a shamanic journey. Um, it's a visionary journey, and we are going to be going deep diving into the creation work of like doing the deep dive of vision boarding, except we're not using a vision board. We're actually going to be creating a little magic box. We're going to work on our dreams, our desires. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be aligning chakras. We're going to be talking about grounding, earthing. We're going to deep dive into the vortex with the power of Max the Ancient Crystal Skull there. And also, we're at the, of course, there is um, food and drink that will be served as well as a beautiful meditation on that. So people who are in the Texas area or Louisiana, Oklahoma, any place close. I've had people come all the way from LA and everything. And I think a few years ago, I had somebody come from Alaska to come to Max um, when I was hosting. So it is definitely potential. This is a beautiful event. There are also private viewings for Max. So make sure that you, if you are interested in the supernatural and the paranormal, if you just want to know more about that, click on the link in the comments section to learn a little bit more about Max, the ancient crystal skull. You can also Google Max the Ancient Crystal Skull and learn all about him and in his guardian, Joanne Parks. So explore that. Other than that, 
I've got some online stuff coming out. Again, check out the events. If you want to know more about anything that I've got going on, message me. Leave a message in the comments. Pop me a private message, email, text, however you can get in touch with me. I am available to you. One-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, global coaching. It is all accessible, beautiful courses and everything as well. Available on my website and here on Facebook if you're catching me on Facebook. If you caught this live, thank you very much. If you're catching it on the replay, let me know in the comment section that you're catching it on the replay. If I've said anything that touched you, made you think of somebody, was like, oh, okay, fantasy is really kind of cool in multiple different ways. Hey, I know how I've been now, now I see how I'm fantasizing. If I have touched you in any way, hit the share button, help me get these messages out there, touch other people's lives, help people expand, grow, and have the fuck yes life that we all are can have the potential to because we're all limitless okay we're all beautiful divine creators and it is our birthright to have a magical empowered life you are worthy of that i am worthy of that we are all worthy of that that is something to trade our life moments for that fuck yes life whatever that might mean to you i love you guys i will catch you tomorrow with another conscious coffee hope you have a beautiful beautiful day beautiful beautiful morning and as always, stop existing, start living. I'll see you tomorrow.